So let's get started. We hope you will join this webinar today about the Samaritan Fabra, about Christina Weiner. Christina uh, holds a Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. She's the Head of Surgical Services at Taconic and has been with Taconic since July 2010. She completed her three-year residency in comparative medicine at Colorado State University, where she also earned her master's degree in microbiology. She received her veterinary training from the University of Pennsylvania and her undergraduate training from Harvard University. She is passionate about improving the welfare of animals used in research. Her primary interest is in developing tools for measuring surgical performance and animal recovery rates as drivers for reducing animal numbers and refining techniques. Mrs. Yvette Harrington is the principal investigator of Physiogenics, a contract research organization based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. With the background in developmental biology, she has worked for Physiogenics for eight years with positions ranging from the lab technician to principal investigator. Mrs. Harrington's current Current responsibilities include developing client relations, research, as well as customized study design and quotes. Mrs. Harrington earned a master's in biology as well as bachelor's in biology and fine arts. In this webinar today, Dr. Christina Weiner from Taconic will first present the Fab Samaritan rat model and describe animal model background, details of the surgery methodology, and characteristics of the animal. Then, Mrs. Yvette Harrington from Physiogenics will present data collected from an in-house study involving the Fab Samaritan Red as part of a model development collaboration between the two companies. Model development encompassed observations as well as the collection of body weight and Morrison water maze data, which measured the development of memory deficit parameters and the efficacy of the compounds being tested. And with these words, I would like to hand over the words to Dr. Weiner. Please, Dr. Weiner. Thank you, Margaret, and all of those in attendance for your time today. This is an outline of today's webinar. We'll begin with a brief introduction to Alzheimer's disease, which I'll reference throughout the presentation as AD. Then we'll discuss available AD animal models from Taconic. We'll then briefly review the original manuscript that described the surgery and development of this method for inducing AD-like disease in rats. From there, we'll move into considerations for research use of this animal. Then I'll pass the presentation to Yvette, who will describe the study design and data set. We'll end with a summary and have time for questions and answers at the very end. Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative disease that primarily affects the elderly. There are two main forms, familial and sporadic. The familial form is thought to have a genetic component to disease development and represents a very small proportion of human cases. The sporadic form has no known genetic factor and represents the vast majority of human cases. There are several hypotheses for how the disease develops, but the etiology remains unknown. Brain lesions include derangements to neuronal cell and vascular architecture within the brain including amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. Human patients also demonstrate often progressive behavioral and cognitive deficits. Taconic offers several genetically modified animals that can be used to evaluate AD. First, the APP SWE microinjected mouse displays classic amyloid plaques. Second, the tau microinjected mouse demonstrates neurofibrillary tangles. Third, the APP SWE tau microinjected mouse combines the features of the APP SWE and tau models. The surgically modified animal is the Samaritan Alzheimer's rat model, or FAB rat, which intends to model the sporadic form of Alzheimer's disease. We'll cover the details of the surgery on the next slide. Before we move on, I will explain what composes the FAB cocktail. The F stands for the ferrous cation, which is a pro-oxidant. The A is for AB42, which is a polypeptide that is a major component of amyloid plaques. 
The B stands for butionine sulfoxamine, or BSO, which is a glutathione synthesis inhibitor. When delivered together, slowly over time, and directly into the brain, these compounds have been shown to induce AD-like disease in rats. Here are some more details of the surgery. All of Taconic surgery is performed in accordance with our IACUC approved protocols and in collaboration with our veterinary sciences group. Our surgery barrier is maintained in an MPF health status. Animals are induced via induction chamber with isofluorine anesthesia. They are then maintained on a nose cone. The hair coat is removed and the skin is prepped for aseptic surgery with three alternating scrubs each of betadine and alcohol. The animal is mounted onto a stereotaxic frame. Animals are evaluated for appropriate anesthetic depth by toe and or ear pinch. At Taconic, we use stereotaxic frames by stolting with the manipulator arm on the left. The incision is made into the scalp, exposing the skull. Then Bregma and Lambda are identified. Coordinates are mapped from the top of the skull and the cannula is placed. The cannula and pump are shown in the top right image. A subcutaneous pocket is made to receive the mini-osmotic pump, which is filled with the cocktail solution and primed prior to placement. The compound is delivered at 2.5 microliters per hour. The incision is closed with wound clips and the animal is recovered. A completed animal is shown on the bottom right image. Please keep in mind that during surgery, the animal is fully draped, but I wanted to show uh, what the finished animal looks like here. The faint brown stain, um, here is the betadine on the skin. And you can appreciate the wound clips and the slight rise of the pump under the skin. Animals receive ocular lubrication during prep and surgery and receive heat support during prep, surgery, and recovery. Analgesics are administered as needed post-op and animals are completely recovered from surgery prior to shipment. This animal model receives a four-week infusion of the FAB solution and develops the lesion over time. Histopathology lesions were shown to include amyloid plaques, hyperphosphorylated tau, neurofibrillary tangles, and neuronal cell loss. Behavioral evaluations of these animals also showed cognitive deficits. For instance, this graphic is showing results from animals evaluated in the Mars water maze and is taken from the original manuscripts cited at the bottom of the screen. The open bars here show retrieval time four days after training, but prior to surgery. The closed bars show retrieval time after infusion. As you can see, there was a difference in retrieval time only when animals received all three compounds together, not when they received other combinations of the compounds. This slide is another graphic from the original manuscript cited at the bottom of the screen and shows two histopathology images of the brain. The image on the left is from a control animal. You can see relatively normal tissue here. In the FAB animal, shown on the image on the right, there is evidence of neurofibrillary tangle and amyloid deposition, as evidenced by uptake of the silver stain. Again, another graphic from the original manuscript. The image on the left is from a normal animal. And again, we see relatively normal tissue. In the FAB animal on the right, there is neuronal cell loss, again with uptake of silver staining. There are many benefits afforded to the investigator when using the Samaritan FAB-induced animal. For this particular disease model, there is a shorter time course for disease induction, just four weeks, compared to the length of time it takes for some other models to develop lesions, upwards of nine to 12 months. The Long Evans rat is used here because it is predisposed to developing neurodegenerative disease, and so an appropriate strain has been selected. Additionally, this induced model is designed to model sporadic Alzheimer's disease, not familial, and to capture the majority of human case applications. And finally, the animals exhibit key features of human sporadic AD, including cognitive deficits, brain lesions, and other abnormalities, including increased levels of hyperphosphorylated tau protein levels in the CSF. 
There are considerations to be taken when using this animal. Investigators must consider that it's an induced model of disease. It's designed using the long Evans animal and has not been validated by Taconic in other strains or in mice. A premortem QC should be established to ensure that the lesion has developed appropriately. Although the methodology was initially verified by Taconic with histology and lesion verification in collaboration with the authors of the original manuscript. We use additional post uh, premortem QCs after surgery um, to verify that the animals have healed appropriately and that their wounds um, are looking good. The surgery department is always willing to consider collaborations with investigators to best meet your research needs. If you have requests for pre-screening of animals for use on study, we're happy to work with you in doing so. And now I'd like to turn the presentation over to Yvette. Uh, for her Thank you, Tina. Um, as stated, I will be elaborating on the physiogenics and tectonic collaboration on the validation of the FAB model. Uh, the study was held at Physiogenics in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and in accordance with our IACUC approval process. So physiogenics is a CRO specializing in rodent models, rats and mice, and typically cardiovascular, renal, and metabolic disorders. We develop customized research programs that cater to our clients' needs and perform near real-time data updates. Clients also have direct communication with the study director in charge of their study. As for the Taconic validation study design, it was set up by our study director as well as our director of research who have experience in the neural behavior field. Uh, animals were allowed to recover for about one week from the surgery at Taconic. Then they were shipped to physiogenics and then were allowed to acclimate for approximately one week before dose initiation. For our Morris water main setup, it was 182 centimeters deep, 61 centimeters, or sorry, diameter, 61 centimeters deep, and still 40 to 42 centimeters deep, depending on whether it was a visible or a hidden day. And our platform was a standard 11 centimeters diameter. We also had a white tub, and the water was made opaque by tempura paint. We used the top scan version 1.0 from Cleversys in Virginia, and which allowed us to measure and record data for the analysis of the distance each rat travels per trial and the latency or time it took each rat to find the platform. For our group design, we had five arms with an N of 8 to 10 each. Group one was the negative model control or an all that pump with vehicle solution. Group two was the positive model control or the all that with the fab solution. Group three, we, well, we uh, dosed with denepazil, which is a common Alzheimer's drug in humans. Group four was compound A, which works on a pathway to decrease the amount and size of plaques. And comp or group five was compound B, which works on a different pathway dealing with memory and cognition. Um, it was not really considered an Alzheimer's target drug. Starting at week three, approximately 14 days after surgery had taken place, body weights began weekly. Um, body weights were used to monitor the animal health as well as calculate individual doses of the vehicle or drug, which was given daily through oral gavage. A Morris water maze protocol was carried out on weeks four and six. Day one was a visible phase or training, and days two through four were the hidden phase or acquisition. Again, the parameters collected were the mean distance traveled and the latency to the platform. Just a note, all slides uh, subsequent will show the mean plus or minus the standard error of the mean. In this slide, it's showing the body weights of the fab rats throughout the study. Again, starting at approximately 14 days after surgery and measured one, once a week. Um, there was no statistical differences between any of the groups at any of the time points. And on day zero, groups two through five were grouped based on the body weight. 
In this slide, it's showing the week four Morris water maze. It's the mean distance traveled per trial. I want to show you data relevant to compound A, which is theorized to reduce plaque formation. As you can see by day four, compound A has a reduction in the mean distance traveled, though not significantly, um, but it has even surpassed the model's negative control, which is group one. Shown here, the mean latency to platform during week four, the data shadows the distance to platform, again with the compound A showing dramatic reductions during that day four. Week six, uh, the Morris water maze, again, the mean distance travel is first. We can see that on day three, compound B, which again is the memory and cognition compound showed a significant decrease in the distance traveled compared to the model positive control, which is group two. And again, the data is shadowed in the next slide, which is the mean latency. And it seems to be stalling, um, but it's, the data actually does shadow with the latency, there we go, as well as with the distance. And in summary, the body weight, again, data showed no statistical differences between the groups. Um, week four, Morris water maze data, uh, compound A designed to mitigate Alzheimer's disease, disease plaque formation. The, both the distance C and the latency data supported potential drug efficacy. Um, we are looking at pursuing different doses of the compound in order to tease out significant differences compared to the model's positive control. And for week six, compound B, which is the memory and cognition drug that works on a pathway not prevalently affected by Alzheimer's, showed statistical differences in latency and distance between compound B and group two, which is the model's positive control. Considerations, uh, working with Taconic staff, they were extremely helpful. They answered all of our questions. Um, and really exhibited very good business ethics. The model development, uh, four-week development, is a much better timeline than having to procure animals and allow them to kind of age out for months. This model allows also for greater variability with the chemical induction versus genetics when choosing an Alzheimer's model. Um, we did observe seizures in the animals receiving the FAB solution. It appears this is part of the model development. We had one animal in group three drop out due to our internal inclusion exclusion parameters. Otherwise, we were able to obtain data from the rest of the animals with an occasional trial being dropped for an animal, which it was less than 1% of all the time, including all trials. And depending on your analysis, your power analysis or your primary endpoint, at this point in time, you would suggest increasing the N by five to 10%. We also observed aggressive behavior from the animals receiving the FAB solution, both towards the human handlers and their cage mates. As this is a behavior that can be observed in Alzheimer's patients, we did not consider this a drawback. As for future studies, we are considering utilizing the FAB model in order to increase our data endpoints and even histology. And now for the overall FAB model summary. Tina? Thank you, Matt. Um, so the Samaritan Alzheimer's rat model went as an induced model of sporadic AD and is commercially available from Taconic. The Samaritan Alzheimer's rat model appears to be responsive uh, to AD drug treatment uh, when evaluated with a Mars water maze. Additional evaluations such as disease progression uh, during the four-week development and or direct delivery of drugs into the brain uh, via a refillable pump um, or switching out the pumps with a second surgery uh, may also prove interesting. And then finally, the Samaritan Alzheimer's rat model may be a useful tool in studying sporadic AD. Please don't hesitate to contact me or Yvette for any additional information uh, or with any great ideas. With that, and on behalf of Taconic and Physiogenics, uh, this completes uh, the end of our formalized presentation, and we're happy to uh, field any questions that folks may have for us. Thanks very much for your attention. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Weiner and uh, Mrs. Harrington, for the interesting presentation about uh, the FAP Samaritan Rat model and the data that were actually obtained by using this model at Physiogenics. So with this, um, we are ready to start our questions and answer session. And please type in your questions in the in the chat box, in the questions and answer box. Um, and I think, yeah, we start to get a question here. Um, so the first question here is, um, and uh, both of you can answer, or the one who feels it's more um, on the on its on your side to answer that question. So the question is, what is the normal acclimation and recovery time for the animals before and after surgery? Uh, this is Tina. I can answer that one. Um, so yep. all animals mm -hmm. having surgery at Taconic uh, come to us from Taconic barriers. Uh, our surgery facility is located in Albany, New York, uh, and so we'll acclimate our animals uh, coming from any, you know, Taconic barrier. Uh, for at least minimally 24 hours. Uh, practically, that's usually three to five days. Um, and then similarly for our recovery time, um, it's minimally 24 hours uh, for the animals prior to shipment. Uh, but practically, it's it's um, it's more like three to five. Um, customers do have the option of having us house the animals for that four-week development time. Um, so we can do that here at our facilities, um, and we can also harvest tissue uh, for our customers if if they're just looking for uh, tissue to be evaluated. Um, so we can do it for the for the full development of of the lesion. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Christina. Sure. Um, there is another question here. Um, somebody. Um, I missed the statement regarding sizes. What what is the incidence and the cause? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that question? I I don't think I heard it. I'm not sure if the vet did. Right. I'll, I'll repeat it. Um, somebody says I missed the statement regarding sizes. Sizes. Sorry, I'm not pronouncing this. But what is the incidence and the cause? Oh, of the seizures. Seizures, yeah. Sorry, I pronounced yeah. it bad. <laughs> no problem. Um, so that's a great question, and I, I was hoping somebody might ask. Um, so, and Yvette, feel free to <laughs> jump in here uh, if, you, if you'd like. Um, we, prior to working with um, physiogenics, um, we very rarely had observed um, seizures in our animals, um, mostly because our customers elect to receive the animals within about a week um, after having surgery, and so we don't often have the opportunity uh, to observe them during the full four-week uh, disease development period. Um, we do keep animals back with each order. Uh, they're just our, our QC retains. Um, but we try to use really as few animals as we possibly can to fill each order. And so we often only have one, maybe two um, animals um, held back. Uh, and so we, have, we had not reliably received those or observed those seizures. Um, Yvette, do you want to just kind of describe what you guys saw? Sure. Um, we weren't really prepared, I guess, to you know for the observations. But once we kind of realized what was going on, we made general notes. I think in the next study we'll do more of a quantitative analysis. Um, but I know the study director, after looking through the data, only about one percent of the trials, the Morse water maze trials, had to be excluded due to you know, the seizures. So it, it wasn't really that uh, prevalent, but it was just something that we noticed. I think it's a really interesting finding. I'm not terribly surprised to, to hear that it happened. Uh, and I think it, it would be interesting to try and um, understand that better. OK, thank you. Another question is, do animals spend the four-week induction period at Taconic? Um, so they, they certainly can. Um, it's really up to the customer. Um, they can receive them soon after surgery, um, or we can house them for that time and then send them on to the customer. OK, thank you. Our next question is, have other strains of animals been evaluated than the, the long-evens rat? 
Um, great question. Um, so not by Taconic. Um, we just offer this procedure in the Long Evans animal. Um, we often and have gotten inquiries uh, for this uh, particular model in other strains or in mice, um, but we presently do not offer that. Okay, thank you. Um, another question is, are the plaques ubiquitous over the brain or restricted to, oh now it just jumped a bit up, restricted to a few regions? So all over the brain or just to a few regions, the plaques in the brain? So for this particular project, histopathology was not included. Um, and so I, I can let um, Yvette maybe speak to that a little bit more if she's comfortable. Uh, but we don't have a tremendous amount of histopathology um, to adequately answer that question. Yeah, for this study, um, it was decided not to do the histology. We are looking into it in the next couple of studies. Um, but again, this was kind of a preliminary, you know, model validation. Um, and once we kind of get the protocols and the procedures a little bit down more, um, and even understanding the model a little bit better, um, we do plan on including histology. Okay. Um, there's more questions here. Have the animals been used to examine factors that can be exacerbate that can exacerbate the damage and degeneration? Not that we know of. Okay. Um, oh, there's another question. Um, have animals been evaluated using a different pump for either FAP or drug delivery? So that's another great question. Um, so not by Taconic. Um, but I think this, there's a potential opportunity here um, using some of the newer, um, you know, either reprogrammable or programmable uh, pumps that are out there on the market uh, that also, I think, um, are, are refillable. So I think this is an opportunity um, to potentially uh, deliver the, the FAB cocktail, um, remove it uh, at the end of infusion, and then deliver a drug directly into the brain at the site of lesion development. Um, to see if there's any either changes um, in the lesion via histology, if there's any behavioral changes in the animal, et cetera. Um, so that, to my knowledge, um, has not been done. I'm not sure uh, if other folks uh, have other information and, and are aware of it, but I, I personally think that would be a pretty cool um, evaluation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So maybe here's a very nice last question rounding up. Um, are there any future plans to continue evaluation of these animals? Yvette, do you want to answer that one? Sure. Um, we actually have a couple of studies planned um, looking, again, toward increasing our data endpoints as well as the histological features. So it's, it's definitely in the mix. Okay. I would agree. Um, yeah. <laughs> So if there are no more questions right now, I think um, I thank everybody for your interest in this Taconic uh, webinar today. Um, please keep an eye on upcoming webinars. Uh, you can see that on the homepage of Taconic on the front, and you can register there. Um, there have been a few um, a few comments here also that we did not touch upon, but. Um, as uh, mentioned in the beginning, uh, both Christina and Yvette will come back to any question or any comment that has been posted here. So even though it may not have been up for discussion right now. So with this, um, thank you again. And uh, please uh, call in for our next webinar. And goodbye. <laughs>